This is the late 70s, I believe 76 or 77 Deluxe Reverb. I just looked at the Reverb Transformer, it said 76. I've worked on this in the past, it's in good shape. But the owner wanted to know if there's a way to get a little earlier breakup out of it. He wanted to know if I could mod it. And yeah, there are a lot of things I could do to a Deluxe Reverb, but there are some things we can do to a Deluxe Reverb or any other Fender uh, Reverb circuit, Reverb Tremolo amp. So that's the Deluxe, the Pro, the Twin, the Super, all the variations of the AB763 in the 60s and then their uh, 70s descendants. It applies to pretty much any Fender from the 60s through the 70s that has reverb and vibrato aside from the Princeton. So let me show you what the trick is. First of all, let's get a bass line. So this is Strat Neck. Uh, so we got uh, volume on three, treble just over five, bass just over five, reverb just over three. So it's not exactly as slouch as it is, but let me show you what we can do to get a little bit more gain without changing the volume control. In these amps, V1 and V2 share a cathode on the first triode of each stage. And that cathode resistor sets the amount of gain. And they have, I'm trying to keep this kind of simple for, gut, for guitarists. We don't need to get into the math and the curves and all that. But the amount of gain that two triodes need is different than the amount of gain that one triode needs. What I've done here first is I've pulled V1, which is the tube used for the normal channel. And the reason this gives us more gain, just a little bit, is because V1A and V2A share a cathode resistor and bypass cap. And the resistor chosen by the factory gives the right amount of gain for two tubes. But when only one tube is used, in this case V2, it has more gain. Not a ton, just a little bit. So here's that same kind of idea. So it's getting that little bit of more grunt. We can hear it. It's not a night and day kind of thing, but it's a move in the right direction. We're gonna do one more thing. As you can see, I'm removing the 12 AT7 from the phase inverter, and I'm taking that 12 AX7 that we took out of V1, and we're putting it in V6. So we're using a 12 AX7 for the phase inverter rather than a 12 AT. Now, it's not optimal as far as the, the design goes, as far as how you theoretically want a 12 AT7 to operate as a phase inverter versus a 12 AX, but it is totally safe and does give a different kind of gain, which is audible. It's just another move towards getting more gain at lower volume settings on the amp. So gain and volume are used interchangeably a lot of the times, sometimes rightfully so. In this case, we're trying to get more breakup out of the amp without changing the channel volume from just over three. And that's what this sounds like. While that has a bit more gain, let me turn the reverb down just a little bit, about two and a half, you still have cleans. You're just gonna have a little bit more grunt when you really push it. Now I showed this with a Strat because the uh, difference in the way the amp reacts is more exaggerated with a Strat or a Tele than it would be with say my 335. Because with humbuckers, you're already hitting the input of the channel harder so that subsequent gain changes can be less apparent. So we had a pretty dramatic increase in the resp uh, overdrive response of this amp just by changing those tubes around. And I know the owner of this amp has humbuckers single coils, P90s, all kinds of wonderful toys to play with. Now, after you've made all these changes, you know, all these changes, non-reversible, non-permanent mods, if you're on a gig and you're playing a Strat or a Tele, 
and you switch to a 335 for a song, you may not have enough headroom or you may not have the headroom that you are used to. So what you can do in that situation is going to go into the second input and to compensate for that, roll the treble up just a hair. And you'll still have a nice amount of headroom there. So hopefully the owner will play this and this will be enough of a move in the direction he wants without making any actual changes to this vintage amp. I can do that. I would just prefer for him to try this first because it's just a matter of moving V1 to V6 and putting V6 aside to be used in the future. This can be put back to completely stock condition in about five to 10 minutes, depending how good at changing tubes you are. Okay, so all the guitar you've heard so far has been level corrected in post so that one clip is not really quiet and the next clip is really loud. But to really hear the differences between the changes we've made, here are little clips of stock, V1 pulled, then V1 pulled with a 12x7 in V6, back to back. I'm gonna do it twice because oral memory is short. So you hear the first, the second, the third, then the first, the second, the third. No level correction applied. I think we'll end it there. I hope everyone found this useful. Uh, you know, consider giving it a like, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff, and I appreciate your time. Thanks.